In this video, we're talking about how to use Riemann sums to find an overestimation and an underestimation of the area underneath the curve. And in this particular problem, the function we've been given is f of x is equal to 9 minus x squared. We're interested in approximating the area over the interval 0 to 3. And we've been told that we're using 5 subintervals, so n is equal to 5. And if we go ahead and graph this function, f of x equals 9 minus x squared, it's going to look like this, just to give us a visual of the function. So the first thing we want to do with any Riemann sum problem is we want to find delta x, which is going to be the width of each subinterval or the width of each rectangle. And so we're going to use this formula for delta x. Delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n. Remember that a and b come from this interval we've been given, so the interval a to b. So if we say delta x is b minus a divided by n, we can say delta x is 3 minus 0 divided by 5, or 3 fifths. So now we know the width of each subinterval, and we want to go ahead and mark those off on our graph. So first of all, we know that the interval in general that we're interested in is the interval from x equals 0 to x equals 3. So x equals 0 is, of course, here, and then x equals 3 is right here, the point at which the graph intersects the x-axis. So we're interested in finding the area under this curve over the interval here, x equals 0 to x equals 3. And now we need to divide this general interval into five subintervals, each of width 3 fifths. So what we want to do first, before we go ahead and draw those on the graph, let's figure out the divisions of the subintervals. So we know that the left edge of the interval is at x equals 0. What we want to do is add delta x to that until we get to the right edge of the interval, x equals 3. So 0 plus 3 over 5 gives us 3 over 5. If we add 3 over 5 again, we get 6 over 5. And we keep going, we'll get 9 over 5, 12 over 5, and then 15 over 5. But 15 over 5, of course, is 3. So we've reached the right edge of the interval, x is equal to 3. So these are going to be the divisions of our subintervals or of our rectangles. So we want to go ahead and mark those off on the graph. So when we do that, we're looking for 3 fifths, which is the same as 6 over 10. And that's this point right here. Then we're looking for 6 over 5, which is the same as 1 and 1 fifth, or 1 and 2 tenths, so that's this point right here. Then 9 fifths is the same as 1 and 4 fifths, or 1 and 8 over 10, so that's right here. And then 12 over 5, which is the same as 2 and 2 fifths, or 2 and 4 tenths, so that'll be here. And then we get to 3, which is the right edge of our interval. So you can see now that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 subintervals, which is what we needed. These lines represent the divisions between the subintervals. Now because we've been asked to find both an overestimate of the area and an underestimate of the area, what we want to do is draw some approximating rectangles that will lead to an overestimate and some approximate rectangles that will lead to an underestimate. So if we do that, here's what it looks like. If we draw a rectangle whose base goes from x equals 0 to x equals 3 over 5, it takes up the width of this subinterval here, and then we extend that up to the graph. If we use left endpoints to estimate the area, then we have to drag this rectangle up until the left endpoint connects with the graph. So you can see here the left endpoint of this rectangle connecting with the graph. If we continue to draw rectangles that connect the left endpoints to the graph, here's what we get. So we draw our next rectangle, we come up here, we want to come up until the left endpoint intersects the graph, so that's here. If we do the next one, we get this rectangle here, and if we draw two more, what you can see is that we're going to end up with an overestimation of the area because all of these rectangles extend up past the graph and you can see all of this extra room in the rectangles over the graph of the curve. So if we use left endpoints, we're going to end up with an overestimation. And in general, that's true for decreasing functions. If you have a function that in general is decreasing and you use left endpoints to approximate area under the curve, you're going to end up with an overestimation of area. Because we're using left endpoints here, what we would want to say is that these points intersect with the graph at x equals 0, x equals 3 fifths, x equals 6 over 5, 9 over 5, and 12 over 5. And we wouldn't be using this x equals 3 value to get an overestimation using left endpoints. 
If, on the other hand, we were to use right endpoints to approximate area under the curve, what we would do is draw the same rectangles, but we would come up until the right endpoint met the graph. And so if we continue drawing rectangles where the right endpoint meets the graph, like this, then what you can see is that we're going to end up with an underestimation of area because there's all of this space above these rectangles but below the curve that isn't accounted for in the rectangle. So these right endpoints will lead to an underestimation of area. We would be using these right endpoints here. And those, of course, would be the values 3 over 5, 6 over 5, 9 over 5, 12 over 5, and x equals 3, 15 over 5. So if we want to go ahead then with our calculation for area, let's first calculate the overestimation where we use left endpoints. So one way to indicate an overestimation is we say area, first of all we're using five sub intervals, so we'll say a sub five, and we'll draw a little line above the a to indicate that this is an overestimation. So an overestimation of area using five sub intervals is going to be equal to delta x, which we already know is 3 fifths, and then multiply that by f of x sub 1. Well, these left endpoints that are going to give us the overestimation, remember we said we were going to use 0, 3 over 5, 6, 9, and 12 over 5. So 0 is going to be x sub 1. So our first value here is going to be f of 0. So we're going to say f of 0. Then we have plus f of x sub 2. So we just use the next value, 3 fifths. So we're going to say plus f of 3 over 5 plus f of 6 over 5 plus f of 9 over 5 and then plus f of 12 over 5 and this will give us then an overestimation of the area. If we wanted to find an underestimation of area, we would say a sub 5 and we would draw a line under the a to indicate that this is an underestimation. That's going to be equal to the same value delta x that we have, 3 fifths, but then remember to get the underestimation we were using right endpoints because we had these purple rectangles here with right endpoints. So we're going to have f of 3 over 5, 6, 9, 12 over 5, and 3. So we're going to have f of 3 fifths plus f of 6 over 5 plus f of 9 over 5 plus f of 12 over 5 plus f of 3 and that will give us the underestimation of area. So then your last step remember is just to calculate when we say f of 0 that means plug 0 in for x into our original function f of x. So if we plugged in 0 here we would get 0 squared which is 0. 9 minus 0 is 9. So we would get here 3 fifths multiplied by 9 and then if we were to plug in 3 fifths we would get 3 fifths squared which would be 9 over 25 so we would have plus 9 minus 9 over 25. For f of 6 over 5, we'd plug in 6 over 5 here. 6 over 5 squared would give us 36 over 25. So we'd have plus 9 minus 36 over 25. Then we'd have when we plug in 9 over 5, we'd have plus 9 minus 81 over 25 plus 9 minus 144 over 25. Now if we do the math correctly, we end up with 513 divided by 25, which if we change that into a decimal is 20.52. So that's going to be our overestimation for area. If we want to do the math here for the underestimation, we'll say that this is 3 fifths multiplied by. We already know that f of 3 fifths is 9 minus 9 over 25, so we can take most of the values from this first calculation here. So 9 minus 9 over 25 plus 9 minus 36 over 25 plus 9 minus 81 over 25 plus 9 minus 144 over 25 and the only value we haven't calculated before is f of 3 and f of 3 here we just get 3 squared which is 9 9 minus 9 is 0 so we end up with plus 0 and if we do the math correctly, we end up with about 378 divided by 25, which is going to be equal to 15.12. So then what we can say is that we have an overestimation of area that it's about 20.52 square units. 
an underestimation of the area, which is about 15.12 square units. So we know that exact area is somewhere between those two values, between about 15 and about 20. And that's how you can use a Riemann sum to find an over and underestimation of area below the curve. Could you use some extra help with math? Click the button to head over to calculusexpert.com. It's where I've collected and organized all of my best resources, including exclusive videos, notes, quizzes, and even formula sheets. It's the perfect resource whether you're struggling, or if you want to take your learning further, or even if you just want to save yourself some time studying. So check it out, because I know it'll help.